If your loved one with dementia wanders around the house and tries to leave, rummages through things, kind of takes everything out of all the drawers and you are kind of at your wits end and you really want to help them, but you tried lots of things and you're not sure how to help them, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Reverend Katie Norris and I am a dementia care specialist as well as a brain health coach. And I've been working in dementia care for 12 years. And I'm also the primary author of the book, Creative Connections in Dementia Care. So today we are going to address understanding wandering and looking at some ways that we can help improve these behaviors in our loved ones. So why do people with dementia wander? Well, it's not actually just because of dementia. Now I know that we have been told this by doctors, dementia associations, and support groups will tell us, oh, people with dementia just wander and that's the way it is and you just need to keep them safe and here's like a few tips and things and see if they work. But the reality is that if we see it that way, then we're really not able to help improve the wandering and decrease it because it's not really just because of dementia that somebody's wandering. So let me explain why. So what I want you to do is think about going to the store Target. <laughs> So you probably know the common joke that people go to Target for three things and then they come out spending $250 and a cart full of stuff and they have no idea how it happened. This happens because we wander the store in Target. Now at Target, most likely you probably don't have dementia. Um, and so is it really just dementia that makes us wander? Target's been around for a long time now and most of us are familiar with it, but we still go there and most of us still wander and we come out instead of with the three things we wanted with like 20 of them. This is because the environment of Target is set up to make you wander. It's winding, it's very busy and set up to get you to look everywhere. Um, the signage is actually pretty high and if you really look at it, it it's brand colors, so it's uh, red and like either white or kind of a gray. But the thing is, everything in the store, especially at that level, is those colors. So the, the signs are actually not as easy to see as you think that they are. And so it's hard to find the aisles to find exactly what you want. Um, it's colorful. They do all like the end caps and everything's catching your attention. It draws your eyes to things that you did not ever think you needed, like that oversized bowl from the Magnolia collection. So while we may go in with a list, some of us do, some of us don't, or we just know what we want, the list is no match for the environment that Target has set up for us to wander throughout and buy. When people with dementia don't have what we call a prepared environment, this is the most common reason for like 90% of the wandering and also a lot of the other responsive behaviors that we see in dementia. This is why people wander and rummage and that their brain is so overloaded that they may have emotional outbursts. And actually I know many people who totally get overwhelmed in Target and they start to feel annoyed, tired, a little bit of brain fog, sometimes confusion because of how the store is set up. So is it only dementia? No, it's that the environment is not set up in a way that works for your loved one. So a prepared environment for a person with dementia needs to be catered to them and their preserved abilities. This is also a big assumption in dementia care that people with dementia just can't do anything. But I take you through assessments on how to assess what their preserved abilities are. There are a lot of them, way more than that we think. So I'm gonna show you a video in a minute about wandering and kind of like one really simple thing you can do to help somebody that's wandering. But before we get into all of that, the thing that you need to learn how to do first is just to become an observer. So first you want to create this habit of becoming an observer. Um, and that's the way that you're going to not only um, be able to assess your loved one's preserved abilities, but then create their prepared environment. And there are two ways to do that. So I think of there's the observation of the physical environment and then there's also the observation of what I call the emotional environment. So the physical environment is probably what you're going to hear a little bit more in dementia care and it's things like is the lighting okay or are shadows make it look like there's holes in the floors? Um, or is there too much clutter? You want to look at contrast of items and reflections in windows and all these different kinds of things. So you want to observe kind of all of that kind of stuff. And also how easy is it for them to navigate their environment? Can they reach what they need? If they have mobility issues, is that chair that they um, 
commonly sit in actually really not a good fit for them. But then the emotional prepared environment, this one's a little bit more tricky and um, kind of just takes some time and we work through that a lot. So emotional prepared environment is really looking at some things like um, time of day, like does something keep happening? during a certain time of day? Do things keep happening after someone gets like a phone call, watches the news, like things that could be affecting um, their kind of emotional memory or some triggers and stuff in the environment that are more emotional. So for example, let's say your parent wanders at 3 p.m. every day. Some people would say this is sundowning and then other people say, oh no, look at the environment and just see like, did the lighting change at three and all this other kind of stuff, which is absolutely something that you should do. However, if your loved one always picked the kids up from school at 3 p.m., it may be wired in their brain that they're supposed to go take care of their kids or do something with their kids at three. And so the environmental support that we might put in there for that is doing something that meets the emotional need of caring for their children. So this is where you're looking at things that might give you a key to what the unmet emotional need is so that we can try and meet those. So I'm gonna put in a video that my son and I created for Instagram. We create um, short Instagram reels together, acting out different dementia scenarios and giving you kind of like what not to do and what you could do instead that might be able to help. What do you need? Uh, just something. Yeah. Okay, you don't know? Okay, well you don't need any of this stuff. Uh, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back. So I hope it helps show you that there are small tweaks that we can make in the environment that can help our loved one function better and stop um, some of like the wandering and the rummaging and stuff that then stresses out the care partner and everybody's kind of at their wits end. And this helps everyone have a better quality of life. Once you get used to the principles of observation and then how to create a prepared environment and assess abilities, it becomes kind of like second nature to you to be able to do that pretty quickly because you're gonna see patterns really quickly and you're gonna to get to know really well what works with your loved one. So you know how like in dementia care, we kind of get through one issue and we're like, oh, okay, this issue of, you know, um, always wondering where the dog is and being always concerned about the dog. Okay, I got that covered. And then like that happened for like two weeks and then the next day it's a different issue that they're rummaging and taking everything out and accusing you of taking all of, your, all of their jewelry. So it feels like there's like no end to like something happens and then it's a whole new situation and you don't know what to do. But this framework, um, my Creative Connections and Dementia Care framework, really helps you know exactly, okay, what are the things that I need to look at? And then I already know most of their preserved abilities. I know what kind of environmental supports work for them. So in this situation, I'm gonna try these things and see if they work. So the ability to handle all of these like changes that happen in dementia really fast become much easier over time. So I hope that this video helps you. If you want to know more about dementia care, then the sign up for my newsletter is in the description box. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Creative Connections Dementia. Please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe and then push the little notification button so that you get a notification every time I put out new content.